We're in sixth grade, lesson 24, quiz done. Today we were reducing fractions, which is fitting because it's what our lesson is going to talk about today. I'll rattle your answers. We'll see how you did. One half, one fourth, three fourths, two thirds, one tenth. Next row. One half, one fifth, one fourth, three fifths, three fourths. Next row. Two thirds, nine tenths, one half, three fourths, one fourth. Final row. Two fifths, two thirds, three fourths, one third, three fifths. So hopefully you check those over, you got the right answers. Your mental math section would have read something like this. You're adding and got $6.72. Multiply by 10, slide that decimal to the right once, $15. Subtracting, 64 cents. Multiplying, 260. Adding them together, you can see that the fractions equal a whole, and so you have a total of 5. Divide by 3 gives you 24. What fraction represents 15 minutes of an hour? That's 15 over 60, and then you have to reduce that. Divide them both by 15, you're down to 1 fourth. 15 minutes is 1 fourth of an hour. What number is three more than half the product of four and six? So I start with the product of four and six, which means multiply, that's 24. Half of that is down to 12. Three more than that is 15. So my answer is 15, but the challenge with that one is we really did the math backwards from the way the sentence went. Okay, problem solving. Huck followed the directions on a treasure map, starting at a big, huge tree. He walked six paces north, turned left. He walked seven more paces. He turned left. He walked five more paces. He turned left. He walked four more paces. Now he turned right, and he walked one pace. The question is, which direction is he facing? He's walking that way, guys. He's facing south. Question two says, and how many paces was he from the tree? If you look on the left here, I have five plus one is six. So up and down canceled out. He walked left seven. He came back four. So he is currently three paces away. Now, I should give directions because I don't know three what. So I would say he is three paces, paces, sorry, I spelled paces, and that direction is west. So he's three paces west of the tree. So when you're giving directions, guys, distance and direction, we have to give both of them. Okay? Problem solving with that one done. Hopefully you had it done beforehand. Got your quiz flipped back over so we can do the examples on the back side. Today we're getting a lesson that is a kind of a review because we know how to reduce fractions. We're going to get introduced to canceling, but guys, I've been talking canceling for a couple weeks, so it's kind of review, and yet the problems that they're going to give you are going to be, in my mind, a step more challenging, and then they'll give you problems specifically made for canceling, and I'll show you what that looks like. You have your yellow folder out. This week you haven't had to fill any blanks in your yellow folder, but you'll still get a nice little review statement about what's going on. It says this and the new concepts. We have been practicing reducing fraction by dividing the numerator and the denominator by a common factor. In this lesson, we will practice a method of reducing that uses prime factorization to find the common factors of the terms. If we write the prime factorization of the numerator and the denominator, we can see how to reduce a fraction easily. Example 1 says, please use prime factorization to reduce this thing, and then we will find the greatest common factor of those. Okay, so I have prime factorization written up here, and now I'm going to use my factor tree to break it down. So the first thing I did is break this to 42 and 10. I broke the 42 to 6 and 7. I broke the 10 to 2 and 5. I broke the 6 to 2 and 3. Now I write that in order. I have 2, I have 2, I have 3, I have 5, and I have 7. Okay, that's my numerator. Now I do the same thing this time with my de denominator. I wrote 105 and 10. 10 is 2 and 5. 105 I'm going to divide by 5 because it ends in 5. That goes in there 2, that goes in there once, it's a 21. I take my 21 now and I have a 3 and a 7. In order, I have a 2, I have a 3, I have a 5, I have another 5, and I have a 7. Okay, now what they're saying is use prime factorization to reduce this. If it's on the top and the bottom, I just cross it out, guys. 2 and 2 is gone, a 3 and a 3 is gone, a 5 and a 5 is gone. 
a 7 and a 7 is gone. What am I left with on the top? A 2. What am I left with on the bottom? A 5. And I reduce 420 over 1050 to 2 fifths. B says, find the greatest common factor of those numbers. So guys, any ones that I crossed out, common, 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 and common. So I had a 2, a 3, a 5, and a 7. And I just multiply those together to get the common, uh, greatest common factor. So I took my 2 times my 5, because that's 10, and then I took my 3 times my 7 and got 21, and 10 times 21 is 210. So the greatest common factor for B is 210. So you turn the page and you can see that we did all our work right with the 2 fifths reducing and the 210. Okay? It's one way to reduce really big fractions. Now, 6, having said that, if I get a question that says, please reduce 420 over 250, and that's all it said, I would not have done that. Okay? I'll show you the problem over here. This is what I would have done if this was my problem over 150. They said reduce that. Now, I want you to think how much time it took us to do this compared to this. The first thing you guys would have done would have crossed off a zero. And then I'd have to look and say, can I reduce this? Now, the one challenge here, guys, is I don't know if we would see that we can reduce this by seven. But what I did do is I checked the three. Four plus two is six. One plus five is six. So I know I can reduce it by three. So when I divide by three here, 3 goes into 4 once, 3 goes into 12 14 times. I divide by 3 here, 3 goes into 10 3, 3 goes into 15 5. Now I have 14 30 fifths. That I can see with 7, and I get 2 fifths. So if you ask me, lots of times it's just faster to just reduce the fractions. And so guys, if you don't want to do the huge prime factorization and you want to reduce the fractions, go for it. Okay, But it's a skill we have to have and learn how to do it. Example two, a set of alphabet cards includes one card for each letter of the alphabet. If one card is drawn from a set of the cards, what's the probability of drawing a vowel? And they want you to include Y. So I have A, E, I, O, U, and Y. So that's six. I know there's 26 letters in the alphabet. I simply have to reduce that by dividing by two on the top and the bottom. Six divided by two is three. 26 divided by two is 13. The probability is three thirteenths. Okay, now the new part of the lesson is canceling. When multiplying fractions, we often get a product that can be reduced even though the individual factors could not be reduced. Consider this one. I have 3 eighths times 2 thirds. So 3 eighths is already in lowest terms and so is 2 thirds is what they're saying. They can't reduce by themselves. But when I multiply them together, I get 6 fourths, which reduces to 1 fourth. We see that neither 3 eighths nor 2 thirds could be reduced, but the product can. We can avoid reducing after multiplying by reducing before we multiply. Reducing before multiplying is also known as canceling. To reduce any numerator with a pair with its denominator. Below we have paired the threes and the two and the eights. Then we reduce these pairs. Three thirds reduces to one and two eighths reduces to one fourth. As we show below. Then we multiply the reduced terms. So they just switch the fractions around guys if that helps you to think about that. Now, Note, this only works in multiplication. You can't cancel in addition and subtraction. You can cancel in division, guys, because when we divide, we, we multiply by the reciprocal. So we really turn it into a multiplication problem. But get it in your head. It's only multiplication. Don't get yourself in trouble and start canceling uh, addition problems. That'd be nice if we could, but you can't. Okay? Um, as far as your yellow folder is concerned, guys, you can see canceling. I just wrote down reducing before multiplying, crossing off the same number in the numerator and the denominator. Okay, it's not just the same number, it's the same factors of a number. So let's practice it. We got example three right here. So what they want us doing is they want us to say, divide by three, three divided by three is one, nine divided by three is three. I can divide by two because they're both even. Two divided by two is one, and eight, 16 divided by two is eight. Then I multiply the tops, I have three. Multiply the bottoms, I have eight. I always check and say, can I reduce three eighths? No, I can't. If you cancel correctly, guys, you can't reduce. But sometimes we miss one of the cancels, and so always check it at the end. Example number four now gives me three numbers. We usually look at this and like, man, these problems are pretty big. These are pretty nice because they usually cancel out really nice. For example, it looks like this. 
three goes into three once, three goes into nine three times. Five goes into five once, five goes into ten two times. Four goes into four once, four goes into eight twice. And sometimes we stop there and we multiply the tops because I forget to look at the one I crossed out. But guys, I can cancel these twos that I crossed out here. So on the top, one, one, one. On the bottom, three times one times one gives me one third. And so you can see when we cancel, guys, it's pretty nice. It's better than going three times eight is 24 times five is, my goodness, I don't know, 120. You know, it's, it gets really big numbers and really hard. So always look to cancel first. The last one is another great example of why we cancel, and that's with big, huge uh, numerators and denominators. We don't want to do this big multiplication. So we start to look and we say, what can we get rid of? I can see these are nines here. So I divide by nine and I get a three. I divide by nine here, I get a seven. I divide by four here, I get an eight. I divide by four here, I get a five. I look, nope, they can't cancel anymore. So I multiply the tops, 15. I multiply the bottoms, 56. And I get 1556. And it's done. Okay, now how do I know that can't be reduced? Because none of these go into each other then I know we're in lowest terms to do those problems. So you got canceling guys, always look to cancel when you're multiplying and make sure you do it only when you're multiplying. Awesome, there's a few examples here if you guys wanna get a little bit more practice in there to do those things. Uh, it's good practice guys, take your time to do those things, I'll see you for the problems. Six, we're ready to get started on the problems. Some of you have noticed I didn't read through page 178 with you on the rest of the lesson. You can see the little calculator symbol there, guys. Uh, your sixth grade teacher doesn't really believe in a calculator for sixth grade math. So if you ever want to read about how to use a calculator, feel free to. Um, but I don't really spend a whole lot of time going through all that stuff with you. Okay, let's get cranking on our assignment. Number one, 300. 24 students were given individual boxes of apple juice at lunch in the cafeteria. If each pack of apple juice contains a half dozen individual boxes, how many packages of juice were used? So I need to take 324 students and I need to divide them into the packages with their six in each package because it was a half of a dozen guys. And so I'm just going to divide six into 324. Goes in there five times, that's 30. Subtract 2, bring down 4, goes in there 4 times. So there was 54 packages of juice to feed all the kids. Number 2, use a ruler to draw a square ABCD 2.5 inches long. Then divide the square into two congruent triangles by drawing AC. So step 1, I'm drawing a square. That is two and a half inches long. If you're really going to do this, guys, it probably won't even fit in your box. Your box is probably not quite two and a half inches, so you might get outside your box. And then I'm going to label that thing A, B, C, D. So if you want to shrink it down, feel free to shrink it down. Then they told me to measure and cut A, C. Okay. Number, letter A says, what is the perimeter of A, B, C? So I have two and a half plus two and a half, plus two and a half, plus two and a half. Okay, I'm gonna do two and a half times four. To do two and a half times four, I have to make it improper. So two and one half is two times two is four plus one is five over two times four over one. Cancel the two, one, cancel the four, two, five times two is 10. So the perimeter is 10 inches. B says, what is the measure of each angle in the square? Well, guys, squares are right angles, so B is 90 degrees. C says, what is the measure of each acute, acute angle in ABC? Well, if you see this angle right here, guys, this was 90, and I cut it in half with my diagonal. So if I take 90 and divide it by 2, I get 45 degrees. D says, what is the sum of the measures of the three angles of ABC? So this guy is 45, this guy is 45, and this guy is 90. 90 plus 45 plus 45 is 180 degrees. You should have learned that last year, that a triangle always adds up to 180 degrees. Number three. Use this information to answer questions A through C. The family reunion was a success, as 56 relatives attended. Half of those who attended played in the big game. 
However, the number of players on the two teams were not equal since one team had only 10 players. A, how many relatives play in the game? So I had 56 relatives and half of them played. So I divide by two. That goes in there, two, four, one, six, eight. So 28 relatives played. My answer to A. B says, if one team had 10 players, how many players did the other team had? So I had an answer of 28. 10 were on one team, so I need to subtract and get 18 players on the other team. C said, if the teams were are rearranged so that the number of players on each team was equal, how many players would be on each team? So what I really want is I want my 28 players divided evenly onto two teams. So 28 divided by 2 is 14. So there would be 14 players on each team. Answer to A, answer to B, answer to C. Number 5, use prime factorization to find the greatest common factor of 54 and 72. So I'm going to do this one, guys, by division by primes. 54 divided by 2 is 27. Divided by 3 is 9. Divided by 3 again is 3. Divided by 3 one more time is 1. Now I'm going to do it with 72. 72 divided by 2 is 36. Divided by 2 is 18. Divided by 2 is 9. Divided by 3 is 3. And divided by 3 again is 1. Okay. Now to find them, I want the numbers that are in both lists. So I have a 2 in both lists, I have a 3 in both lists, and I have another 3 in both lists. So I take those numbers and I multiply them together. 3 times 3 is 9 times 2 is 18. So my answer for number 5 is 18. This is the greatest common factor, how we can use, do, use prime factorization to get it. Number six, in the following statement, write the percentage of reduced fraction, then diagram the statement and answer the questions. Jason read 75% of 320-page book. How many pages did he read? How many pages did he not read? So, guys, I need to know that 75% is three-fourths. Remember, percent is out of 100. Divide them both by 25. You got three-fourths. Should be memorized. Now I'm going to go into 320. 4 goes into 32, 8 goes into 0, 0. Divide by my denominator, multiply by my numerator. So 3 times 0 is 0, 3 times 8 is 24. I have an answer of 240 pages. That's answer to A. B says, how many did he not read? I need to subtract. So 320 minus 240. 0, can't, 12, 8. He has 80 pages that he didn't read yet. B, A. Turn the page of my book. How many three-fourths are in one? Remember, when it's one, it's always the reciprocal. I don't have to do the math, guys. I certainly can. It's one, stay, change, flip, right? And I got my answer. Then it says how many three-fourths are in seven-eighths? Seven-eighths divided by three-fourths stays changes, flips, cancel. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 4 into 8 is 2. Multiply 7. 7. Multiply 6. Simplify 1 and 1, 6. So guys, if you look at 7B already, you see that you have to know how to set it up the proper way, which is, in my mind, backwards order. If that helps you do with it, okay? Number nine, write 84 and 210 as products of prime numbers, then reduce them. Let's do factor trees with this one. I have 84. Okay, I'm going to divide by 7. 7 goes into there 12 times. That's 3 and 4. That's 2 and 2. Here comes the prime factorization of 210. 210 is 21 and 10. This is 3 and 7. This is 2 and 5. So my 84 was 2 times 2 times 3 times 7. My 210 was 2 and 3 and 5 and 7. I'm going to draw a line here so I don't get confused. Okay, now it says for number 9, Write the prime factorization of products of prime numbers. So, guys, this is your answer for 
A right here. Now I'm supposed to reduce that. Twos are gone. Threes are gone. Sevens are gone. I'm left with two-fifths. So that's the second part of your answer for A. It's two-fifths. B says, what's the greatest common factor? What did I cross out? A two, a three, and a seven. Now you multiply those together, guys. Two times three is six, times seven is 42. So if I was asked to reduce 84 two-tenths, and I want to do it in one step, I would divide by 42 over 42, okay? That's what they're trying to teach you with that lesson. Number 10, write the reciprocal of each number. So I take 9 tenths and I flip it to 10 over 9. B, I take 8. 8 is literally written like this, so the reciprocal is 1 eighth. C, we're practicing reciprocals of 2 and 3 eighths. Make improper. 16 plus 3 is 19 eighths. Then reciprocal, 8 nineteenths. Okay, that's good practice of that. Do not just flip the three eighths, guys. That'll get it wrong. D, what is the product of two and three eighths and the reciprocal? Any number times its reciprocal equals one. E, what rule do you know about reciprocals that could help you answer D? I know E, inverse property. That's what the rule is. Any number times its reciprocal equals 1. Number 13, write 2 and 2 thirds and 2 and 1 fourths as improper. 2 and 2 thirds multiplied and added is 8, 9, 10 over 3. 2 and 1 fourth, 8 plus 1 is 9 over 4. Then find the product of the improper's. I'm going to take 3 into 3 once, 3 into 9 three times. Divide by 2, divide by 2. Multiply the tops, multiply the bottoms. Switch to a mixed number, 7 and 1 half. Oh, my goodness. And then I was checking my math here that I did in my head, and I wrote down a 10, and I should have wrote down an 8, guys. So this is not going to cancel to 5. It's going to cancel to 4. That's going to give me 12 over 2, which would be 6. That was a close call there. Hopefully you were yelling at your computer screen saying, Mr. Bauer, you wrote down 10. It should have been 8. Okay, that was number 13. Last one on the front side is number 15. It says draw line AB. Then draw ray BC so that ABC measures 30 degrees to use a protractor. So, guys, I'm drawing AB, and then I'm thinking 1 o'clock, so it might have been helpful to draw it earlier, but I'm going to get about an hour. So this is line AB, and this is BC, and this is 30 degrees. My A should be over here. Sorry, not over there. Okay, so you're in the end, you're drawing this thing that looks like that. Two, what type of angle is ABC? Guys, that's small, it's a cute angle. Flipping my answer key over, number 21. We have 3 fourths times 5 ninths times 8 fifteenths. Okay, 3 times 5 is 15, they're all gone. 4 goes into 4 once, 4 goes into 8 twice. I'm left with this 2 and this 9 as I reduce. So I have 2 nines. 23, today's lesson, we got a division problem. 8 fifths. I'm going to write it as I say, stays the same. Changes to multiplication, flips over. 5s are gone. Divide by 2 is 3. Divide by 2 is 4. So I have 4 thirds, which equals 1 and 1 third. 28. A regular hexagon is inscribed in a circle. If one side of the hexagon is 6 feet long, then the perimeter of the hexagon is how many feet? I said that wrong. I said 6 feet. I meant 6 inches. So you have a hexagon at six sides. Each one is six. Six times six is 36. It's 36 inches. They asked me for feet. How many inches in a foot? 12. So I take my 36. I divide it by 12. 
That gives me three feet. 29. A two-inch square was cut from a four-inch square to show the figure. What is the perimeter of the resulting polygon? Guys, you can do work with this, but if I read my problem easy, I know this is four and I know that's four because it was a four-inch square. I know that if I drop this line down and this line out, I have a square. So four times four is 16 inches. 30, which negative integer is the opposite of the third prime number? Prime number, first one's two, next one's three, next one's five. What's the opposite of five? Negative five. So your answer is which negative integer? Negative five.